The views and opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily those of Union Broadcasting, Inc., ESPN 1510, or its employees. The host is solely responsible for the on-air content. Welcome back to Casey Cares, Kansas City's nonprofit voice, telling the stories of Kansas City nonprofits and the people behind them. I am Bobby Keys. Welcome back for another edition of Nonprofit Storytelling. We get to... That's the cool thing about, you know, Kansas City is there's so many nonprofits here. There's so much love and, and you hear it all the time. Uh, you know, ab- when people come from out of town and, and when they're traveling, which is which is where Ruth is. That's she's in she's in Spain. So I'm, I'm pretty sure she's even going to hear about Kansas City out there. But it's 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 awesome to always hear, you know, you know, from different parts of the country, the, the love that they feel when they come to Kansas City. And that and that translates across, you know, our nonprofit community. And so we always get to we get, you know, we're pretty fortunate to be able to talk with these nonprofits. And today we got three awesome nonprofits. I think they're even new. They're all brand new. We're going to be talking about coaching in a nonprofit world, sports in a nonprofit world, tutoring, education. And, but first, we're talking about sewing. Right. We've got it now. I, I, I forget the, to, to test this out. It's Eileen Babowski, right? Correct. Yes. You we got go- it. And now you, you're the executive director of the Sewing Labs in Kansas City, right? That's right. Uh, we're a fairly new nonprofit to Kansas City. We've been around for uh, about a well, four years. We have our five hundred one c three for about a year and a half. Congratulations! Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, we're getting ready to expand, which is exciting. Um, we teach sewing towards employment and entrepreneurship, which is our goal mm-hmm. in all forms of sewing. Okay. Quilting, garments, um, you name it. We will teach people how to sew. And there's employers here in town that are actively seeking trained sewists. So it's a sewist. That's the new term. It's a combination of uh, sewer and artist. Oh, nice. Sewist. Um, Sewer also spells sewer, so, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Sewist is the new term. Seamstress is still technically correct, as is tailor. Okay. um, Yeah. So now, I guess, what do they sew? Oh, my goodness. You name it, they yeah. learn all the basics. Domestic sewing, like latch, latch and hook, and you start. I guess, that's what I learned. I was, I was, I got a mean latch and hook. I, I want to. That's awesome. <laughs> so we start out training on domestic machines, like okay. you or I would have grown up on. Okay. And then we also move them over to industrial machines, which a lot of the employers in town actually use. Uh, okay. So uh, we've got sergers. We, you name it. So yeah. So that's the, I guess, and the, I, I, maybe a lot of people just don't realize that the 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 jobs that are needed on on a, on a on a corporate level that you're talking about, or yeah, I guess you would call it on a, on a bigger, on a bigger scale. Yeah. Yeah. Because immediately you think I'm thinking the thing that I grew up with, with the foot pedal and sitting there, um, (laughs) but they're bigger. Absolutely. So Mm. I'll give you an example. Sure. Uh, the Sealy temper mattress company, Oh, yeah, we okay. recently toured their factory with some of our students, and they you. were so impressed to find that we're training people on the machines that they actually use. And they have four levels of sewists that they hire. Okay. I'm starting out at $16 an hour, and Whoa. it goes up from there, and that's with benefits. Uh, we toured another company called Fabric Quilt in Northtown, and they were thrilled to find that we're training people on the machinery that they're using. So wow. uh, we try and... Um, grow those partnerships all over town there. I know there's a lot of other uh, employers that are looking for trained sewists. That... So, so how did this start? Like, where did, where did, did start from the beginning, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So we actually grew out of a for-profit business. Okay. Uh, in the mid-2000s, there were two women, uh, Kelly Wilson and Lonnie, Van, Lonnie Vanderslice, mm. who had lost everything. Their, uh, their worlds were crashing down here in from, Kansas City. Okay, from Kansas City. And when their worlds came crashing down, they decided to dig out their high school sewing machines. And they started making pillows for Nell Hills when they were still up in Atchison. And Mary Carroll came back to them and said, could you do 200 pillows a week? Well, <laughs> sure we could. <laughs> it's a big jump. About the same time, Sister Berta started a program called 100 Jobs for 100 Women and was at an event with Kelly Wilson. And she said, is there anyone in this room that'll hire a woman? And Kelly, of course, raised her hand. She had 200 pillows a week to make. And so she has. they have grown this business called We've Got You Covered okay. and um, hired uh, people who may be dealing with generational poverty, mm-hmm. um, recovery and substance abuse, formerly incarcerated, immigrants. And they've got a very successful business going. 
Um, and last January, they purchased another business uh, up in Northtown, mm-hmm. which is now called Women's Spirit. They make clergy vestments. And Lonnie had left the sewing labs. Well, let me back up, actually. Mm-hmm. So in 2016, they actually formed the sewing labs. They brought in a good friend, Linsa Stevens, mm-hmm. uh, who has 40 years of retail sewing experience and a good friend of theirs. And so the three of them decided to start this nonprofit. And... Lonnie was a part-time executive director while still working at We've Got You Covered, okay. and Linsa was helping to run the operations and create the curriculum for the classroom. Back in January of last year, they purchased this new business. Uh, I think it was called Sacred Stitches before. Now it's Women's Spirit. Okay. This is who makes the clergy vestments. And so Lonnie stepped into that role as a, a full-time CEO, which opened the door for me to come in. I had been in the nonprofit world with a lot of different nonprofits and was looking for an opportunity. I ran into them at a chamber event up in Platte City, and we got to know each other and came down and I took a tour of the sewing labs and... Next thing you know, I'm talking with the board of directors. And <laughs> <laughs> and then you get pulled right in. <laughs> I did. I grew up sewing as well. Okay. Uh, it's part of my legacy. Yeah. Uh, and so very important to me. So, okay, so I, I, you're speaking to whom? Like, if, I'm, if I want to get involved with this program, like, what, what am I doing? Like, how, how do I, how do I oh, get involved? And, and what, what type of people are, you know, go through the program? Uh, you name it. We've got gentlemen in the program. We've got women. We've got kids in the program. And we're also expanding. We've started a new program, thanks to the Kaufman Foundation, called the Sewing Salon. The sewing Salon. So much like a beautician rents out space uh, to do people's hair, okay. we will have sewing stations that people can come in and rent out to do their business. Oh, wow. We'll also have short-run contract jobs, mm-hmm. short-run manufacturing jobs that students could come in grab a job off the wall and sit down and sew um, and oh. be, be paid a stipend for that. Oh, so, okay. So, and they <laughs> Got to go through training. Okay, okay. Yep. And we're also partnered with uh, Don Bosco Centers, and their okay. English as a second language. Okay. And so we have room full of people from all over the world, don't necessarily speak English, but they're <laughs> sitting down and they're learning to sew together. It's pretty amazing. And so if, if you go through a training program, how long how long would something like that take? Uh, it kind of varies okay. uh, between 10 and 16 weeks. So we've got a class going right now, okay. and the goal is they train on domestic and industrial. They end up leaving with a certification in sewing, and if we're lucky, we gift them with a gently used sewing machine. Oh. Um, so some people will actually just set up a shop in their own basement. They want to be the village sewist and sew mm-hmm. for their family or their community. Others want to be partnered with these employers, and sure. yet others want to become entrepreneurs. Uh, that, that's so that's got to be wonderful for people who don't actually you know who don't speak english i mean that's such a skill that you know it, you, you don't have the language you don't down yet you just moved here you need a job that is a skill set that is just you know it and, is and it seems like it's 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 it seems more prominent uh, overseas is that, am I would I be wrong in that? No, I think that's right. A lot of our manufacturing is done overseas, yeah. and so that's a, a great connection to make. Um, but I'll tell you, the community that takes place in the room when people yeah. from all over the world are sitting down sewing. Right. I can tell you about two people that came. Kind of like us. music. So, yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, we had two students, a married couple, Khalid and Fatin. They're immigrants mm-hmm. from Iraq. They left war torn Iraq. Came found the Don Bosco Centers, wanted to learn to speak English better, became citizens, and they came to our Sewing as a Universal Language class. And they said all their lives they were so right-brained. They have many, many degrees in science and math and engineering, and yet none of that transferred over here. Uh And so they found sewing and realized, oh my goodness, because of sewing, we now have joy in our hearts, and we're using our left brain <laughs> to do all this creating. Yeah, pretty amazing. That's awesome. And so, how many? I guess how many? How many people do you are, are you able to train per year? Last year, we trained over 127 students wow. over 2,000 hours. Um, so, and, and then once you train them, you know, and they go through the what what happens after that what's the process after that we try we take them on tours of these businesses mm-hmm. like i mentioned so mm-hmm. we try and take them to as many businesses and make them aware of the companies that are hiring uh, and as i said some of them may want to just work out of their yeah. own home um, so we try and connect them with employers as best we can um, what, what does that placement rate look like i mean is it yeah you know i mean it, it, it depends since we're so new we've sure. had a couple of people that have been placed um, but we don't do enough follow-up yeah yet 
Um, it's a, we're very small. It's Absolutely. myself as executive director, yeah. and Alinsa Stevens is our operations manager. We've got two part-time teachers now, mm-hmm. which is helping us tremendously in the classroom. Yeah. Um, well, I, so, think, I think that's awesome. I mean, I, I love that because there's so many, you know, there, a lot of the nonprofits need, you know, we all need help like that and understanding what these what these problems are and what we face. And it's, and, you know, so, and that's where, you know, volunteers oh come in. Goodness. Oh, my We have right? some amazing <laughs> volunteers. We're always looking for more volunteers we like to look at our volunteers especially in the classroom as mentors they don't necessarily have to know how to teach sewing but we want them to encourage the students who are in the room we've got the curriculum all written for them if they can follow along the curriculum and guide those students Mm -hmm. it's tremendous but because it's just the two of us we need help with marketing and social media and development and events so there's all kinds of opportunities for us Uh, yeah and there's so many so many elements that you need uh, as a nonprofit to keep a and and those as you just mentioned are all uh, crucial <laughs> absolutely we also accept in-kind donations of fabric and notions and uh, gently used sewing machines oh, yeah. one of the things that Khalid said when he had gone through his training he said I don't know how I can help you but I can fix machines <laughs> oh, so he's already fixed about fixed about 12 or 13 machines for us how many how many machines do you get or do you need per year? Well, that's a, I, have, I don't know if we've ever actually figured it out per year. We get a fair amount of them, and so if we have a class of right now, we've got a class of ten. Mm. We've got to have ten machines for yeah. them because we want to be able to gift them with something to take home and be able to hone their craft even more. Yeah, and, and as far as fabric, do you is there? How does that? You get they just give you the excess fabric, we've, or do you go out to people or, or corporations? And how does that? Well, uh, one great avenue for fabric for us is the quilt guilds that exist all around Kansas City. I think there's about 25 or 30 quilt guilds in the area, and they're wonderful donators of fabric to us. They'll save it up and bring it by. The exciting news for us is we're getting ready to move. Oh, okay. And so we're going to be going from 900 square feet to 4,000 square feet. That's quite a big uh, jump. Yes, it is. We're very <laughs> excited. We'll be able to train more students. That's awesome. Bring in more fabric. <laughs> and as and as that because of the it's a partnership the, 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 with co- so coffee? Don Bosco oh, Don, we were partnered with oh, Don Bosco okay. um, is renovating the community center up in the Columbus Park neighborhood mm. and they invited us to move in on the very first floor there That's so awesome. we'll be tenants on the basement and then the community center is up above and uh, we we're just there yesterday and saw the construction that's coming along really great we're excited we'll be there probably hopefully mid-april i was going to say when yeah when are you moving in and when and can people just come by and 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 <laughs> check it out or uh, you can drive by the building <laughs> you can't come inside and see it and probably until may so until we'll, may. we're going to start something uh once we move called the columbus park social mm-hmm. they have a um I believe it's a third Friday's event in that neighborhood. And so we're going to open up our doors and welcome people into the community, have volunteers come in, sit down, sew a quick little project, maybe have a little snack or a little meal. Um, So we're excited about the social. (laughs) Hey, nice. I see what you did there. So do you have do you you have classes for, you know, or offer anything for kids? Um, We're actually doing we did a summer camp last year. We're going to do summer camp again this year. And we do have kids that come in and learn how to sew. Yeah. Um, we've partnered with the YMCA, had a group of kids that came in. We've done things with the Girl Scouts before. Um, so. So I, because I, I, I was taught, you know, at an early age how to sew. And, and so I still, to this day, it comes in so handy. I've, I've ripped jeans. I My daughter's pants yeah. the other day, uh, or last month, I sewed them up. She had no idea. Right. And she, I was like, I, I sewed your pants. She was like, no, you didn't. I was like, look, right here. <laughs> and she was like, whoa. That's so. awesome. Well, another aspect of the sewing labs that's important to us is there were remnants left over from We've Got You Covered. They didn't know what to do with those remnants. They didn't want them to go into a landfill. The environment is very important to us. Yeah. And so recycling and upcycling those items of clothing um, is important to us. So we're now partnered with the Climate Council of Greater Kansas City. They're a fairly new nonprofit, and so they help expose us. And they loved it when we talked about slow fashion and slowing things down, you know, not necessarily well, buying all those $5 T-shirts that are created overseas. And uh, yeah. fas- fast fashion is the number two polluter in our world. Really? That's yes. a, that's interesting because you do see this 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 chain this turnover. I mean, even things mm-hmm. like I mean, I don't want to bash it, but like Etsy and the, you know, it, it, it's just immediate. You, you get it out and for cheap, and then you're on to the next 
Absolutely. You know. It's okay to hang on to your clothes. Everything I'm wearing today is thrift store. Yeah. I shop thrift store. I upcycle uh, and try to repurpose it. I recently learned that 16% of people said that they did not know how to sew a button on, and they would rather pitch that item of clothing and buy something new. What? That's not good for our environment. No, no, no. I sew buttons. And I actually even, I, I, I'll i go out of the way when I buy new pants, I'll reinforce it, the buttons. And I'll just sit there and go through the loops and because yeah. I, I learned how to sew a button and I, I lose so many. I, I, it's probably because I bought it by the wrong size. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. So how can people get to you real quick? Uh, the sewing labs dot community is our website. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. Check us out. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the sewing labs dot community, not right. dot com. No, dot, it's dot .community. Dot .community. Eileen Babowski, Executive Director of The Sewing Labs, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening to KC Cares. We'll be back.